On today's show, as Ray reviews of the F-150 Lightning roll in, Ford hints that it's readying LFP batteries to power its entry-level versions of its electric vehicles. StoreDot completes a live 10-minute recharge demonstration of what it hopes is a revolutionary breakthrough for EV batteries. And a Ukrainian motorcycle company that found itself in the midst of an illegal invasion is moving forwards with production plans regardless. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. This week, the official press embargo for the first drive impressions of the Ford F-150 Lightning pickup truck were lifted and pretty much everyone who attended the press launch in Austin, Texas, USA had only good things to say about the full-size electric ute. The F-150 Lightning is currently powered by NCM batteries supplied by SK Innovation. But this week we learned that Ford has been busy working on LFP cells for its entire range of electric vehicles. F-150 Lightning, Mustang Mark-E and Ford E-Transit. And, according to some pretty big hints dropped by the company's CEO Jim Farley, may be introducing LFP battery variants of all three vehicles in the near future. LFP is considered a more stable chemistry than NCM, costs less, and doesn't use cobalt or nickel. However, as it isn't as energy dense, it thus will likely only be used in entry-level models, just as Tesla has for its Model 3 and Model Y. I'm sure we'll know more in the near future, so watch this space. Rivian posted its official quarterly results this week, posting a massive $1.6 billion loss during the first quarter of this year. Missing revenue predictions from Wall Street by 26.19%, Rivian's financials didn't look as rosy as some had hoped. But in the last few days since the results were posted, Rivian has enjoyed a surge in share price. This likely tied to Rivian's confirmation on Wednesday that it has enough cash on hand to reach production status of the Rivian R2 SUV by 2025 at its newly announced factory in Georgia. Additionally, Rivian said that its production at its first factory in Normal, Illinois is now well above 1,000 vehicles per month, meaning its Q2 figures should be more healthy than its first. And while I'm sure Many will be looking at this and decrying the slow ramp up. It is worth remembering that Tesla only produced about 3,100 cars during its first two quarters of Model S production back in 2012. Simply put, ramping up production as a startup is hard. As prices of gasoline go up around the world, there's been an increased demand for electric vehicles, with any models on dealer lots getting snapped up and even used EVs going up in price by a significant amount. And this week, a new report from Energy Innovation made it blatantly clear why. Buying an electric car is now cheaper from day one than it is buying a comparable gasoline, diesel or hybrid vehicle. Comparing the costs to purchase insurance, service and fuel electric vehicles from a variety of different manufacturers, including including Hyundai, Kia, Nissan, Volvo and Ford, the study proved that for many vehicles, including the Ford F-150 Lightning Pro and Hyundai Kona Electric SEL, the total cost of ownership was cheaper from day one in the majority of US states. Only the Kia Nero EV showed itself up to be a bad deal in most states because the vehicle it was being compared to was its hybrid variant with a surprisingly high fuel economy. So the next time someone tells you EVs aren't affordable, well, just show them this report. Electric vehicle startup Canoe, which was celebrating just last month that it had been awarded the price of producing next generation Astro vans from Artemis program, has hit hard times. As the company detailed in its Q1 earnings report this week, its rapid rate of cash burn with no revenue meant that its losses widened, with 125.4 million lost in just three months. In a regulatory filing, the company states that, quote, if we're unable to obtain sufficient funding or do not have access to capital, we will be unable to execute our business plans or significantly curtail our operations and our prospects, end quote. Simply put, the company has issued a going concern warning. If things don't get better soon, we think it's likely that Canoe will become cannot. After running out of charge, one of the biggest concerns that non-electric vehicle owners have about making the switch to electric vehicles is just how much time it takes to refuel. 
as a consequence, we've seen some pretty massive amounts of cash funneled into developing faster charging vehicles and battery chemistries. But perhaps none have been so quick as the pouch shell being promised by Israeli firm Stordot. The company has been touting its patented super-fast charging technology for years, and this week it demonstrated its rapid charge technology live at EcoMotion Week 2022 in Israel and streamed it online at the same time. With on-screen text displaying battery capacity, state of charge, voltage and cell temperature, the cell, which Stordot says was identical to engineering samples currently being evaluated by automakers around the world, recharged from 0 to 80% full in just 10 minutes. When placed together with other cells to form a battery pack, Stordot says this is equivalent to 200 miles, 321 kilometres of range being added in just 10 minutes. Impressive. Despite the ongoing electronics component shortage and continuing fear of a global recession caused by rising inflation in many of the world's major markets, 2022 will be another record-breaking year for renewable energy. That's according to the International Energy Agency, IEA for short, which said in its latest renewable energy market update that it predicts renewable energy deployments will accelerate this year by more than 25 gigawatts when compared to last year. This means instead of the 295 gigawatts of deployment Deployed generation switched on last year, it believes we'll have 2022 seeing 320 gigawatts of new renewable energy generation turned on. That capacity alone is enough to instantaneously power the whole of Germany. Granted, we're not even halfway through the year yet, but here's hoping the IEA's very well-informed predictions are proven correct. Panasonic has long been a battery partner of Tesla's, working alongside the company to design, build and operate the Gigafactory just outside Sparks, Reno in Nevada. It's no surprise then that Panasonic has been busy beavering away producing test cells of Tesla's latest battery design, the tab-free 4680 cell that Tesla wants to use in future iterations of its EVs. And although Panasonic already has a test production line worth $700 million operating in Japan, just making 4680 cells, it's said this week that Tesla has been putting the pressure on for it to ramp up to full-scale production lines. Since Tesla plans to use 4680 cells in everything from Model 3 and Y to Tesla Semi and Cybertruck, it's no wonder that Panasonic is feeling the heat. And yes, this also means that the hunt, supposedly, is on for a new location for Panasonic to site a production facility in the US. Although Panasonic hasn't yet confirmed that particular rumour. Commercial truck specialist Exos unveiled two new commercial vehicles this week at the Advanced Clean Transportation Expo. The first, the HDXT, is a Class 8 heavy-duty tractor unit and is capable of pulling 56,000 pounds for up to 230 miles, 370 kilometers per charge, while its sibling, the MDXT, is a Class 6 or 7 commercial vehicle capable of accommodating a variety of bodies that can travel up to 270 miles, 434 kilometers per charge. At the same time, the company also unveiled its new fleet management system called Exosphere. We had been invited to witness this firsthand in LA this week, but well, my wife's appendix had other plans. But fear not, we've already checked in with Exos and we're hoping to visit the company later this year. Rumours are currently flying concerning a brand new $7 billion EV production facility that Hyundai is expected to build in Georgia. While Hyundai has confirmed it's investing $7 billion into a new US production facility, the official location has not been announced yet. But with President Joe Biden due to visit Seoul next week, it's expected the announcement will be made then. Hyundai, like other automakers, is looking to bring domestic EV production to the US in order to avoid import tariffs and take advantage of the Biden administration's various incentives on offer to companies willing to build electric vehicles and their battery packs in the US. If Georgia is indeed the chosen state, it will be the second EV production facility announced there this year, as Rivian is already well underway with plans to build its new factory there. The ability to make super long distance trips by car without stopping to refuel is an argument many people come up with when explaining why they feel an electric car won't work for them. 
But as most people with EVs will tell you, the majority of electric cars on the market today can easily accommodate upwards of a week's worth of daily trips without ever needing to recharge. And now there's new data to back that up. According to a study from the Maryland Transportation Institute in the US, which used anonymized national mobile device data as a starting point, 52% of all trips made last year were less than 3 miles, 4.8 kilometers in length, while 28% were under 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers in length. Only 2% of trips were in excess of 50 miles, 80 kilometers, showing that what we think we need and what we actually need, moreover, from that data, most of of us should be dumping our cars completely and walking, cycling, or using micromobility instead. Transitioning the world's fleet to cleaner, greener electric vehicles isn't just about getting people to dump the pump with their personal cars, it's about getting everyone to make smarter choices about how we get people and goods around the world. So when one of the world's largest delivery services, DHL, makes a massive order for electric trucks, it is time to sit up and take notice. And this week, that's exactly what DHL did, placing an order with Volvo trucks that will, hopefully, lead it to electrifying the majority of its vehicles. It's starting with a 44-truck order designed to electrify some of its heaviest truck routes across Europe. Having tested electric trucks made by Volvo for the last two years, DHL says it's time for its fleet to fully transition. With the majority of trucks due to be FE and FL models, plus four heavy-duty FM trucks for the UK, DHL's carbon footprint and fuel costs are about to go way down. And finally, Last year, a Ukrainian electric motorcycle company called Emgo debuted its first model, an EICMA, called the Emgo Scrampa. The off-road capable electric scrambler certainly looked the part and created a lot of buzz. But since then, the company's plans to bring the Scrampa to production have been thwarted by, oh, you know, the largest conflict in mainland Europe since the Second World War. Just like other Ukrainian firms struggling to survive the illegal and brutal Russian occupation, Emgo had to think on its feet. And this week, we learned that it's managed to pull off quite an impressive feat, arranging to shift production of the Scramper from Ukraine to Poland. I am glad to see this success story from the heart of a war-torn nation. And while I'm at it, I want to remind you that Ugears are also an incredible Ukrainian company who would love your help right now. I don't want to send you to an affiliate link, so just be sure to head to ugearsmodels.com where five euro from every purchase will be donated to Ukrainian relief efforts. And on that note, we're done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched, do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch, and in doing so, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week with more awesome content, but until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.